monkey out of me because you're such a monkey. I gotta be ready to hug you, baby. I'm a podium kind of guy. I'm not a fourth place kind of guy. It's like I'm real. Very strange, Vanessa. Very strange. That's good. I love it. I love it. Never ends. Never, ever, ever, ever ends. The money flows free in Montreal. Collected the How sick are you in the head? Oh, that was a blow up. The Premier League stuff is sick, bro. Tonight, heat number five of six plays out at the Playground Poker Club. The tension is really mounting for all of our 12 pros, all desperate to take a seat at the coveted final table, where $400,000 will be awarded to the winner. Last time, Heat 4 provided us with more drama and excitement as Phil Locke stole the show. All in. For the second time this season, Scott Seaver left with a bagel. Jungleman busted with one point. Vanessa Selbst fell next. Busy hung in for five points. Have fun, guys. Hometown hero Duhamel bailed for seven points. Locke got lucky. That's unbelievable. You had me big time, bro. On more than one occasion. It never ends. Never, ever, ever, ever ends. I love going fast. I love this. Motocross, bring it on. I see jumps. Wow, you're so sick. I mean, wow. Early leader Esfandiari out in third. Locke was pipped at the post by Coleman. Am I out? <laughs> I think so. Here's how it stands after four heats. Clear by eight points, Dan Coleman is a lock for the top four zone, where our players head automatically onto the final table. Sorrell Mizzy and Jeff Gross also look secure. For Jason Kuhn, he'll be in the clubhouse after tonight and rely on others to determine his fate. Those in the playoff zone will be battling it out in heads-up matches for the last two seats on the final table. It's snug round there, with Esfandiari and Locke in action tonight, and then, with six of the bottom eight in the league in action in the final heat, it will be a scramble to the finish line to grab a top eight placing. Heat number five has all the ingredients for another interesting game where tactics will undoubtedly play their part. For some, it's the last chance to secure the points to keep them in the Premier League. Tonight, joining Jesse in the commentary booth is Sorrell Mitzi. Heat five is where things start to get extreme in the Premier League. I mean, Sorrell, four guys coming in today. It's their last heat, so they're going to have to post a number, a score on the door. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's the way things have been going is that uh, the people who have been doing well continue to do, be doing well, and the people who aren't doing well continue to be not doing well. So it's going to create this interesting dynamic where Dan Coleman and Jeff are going to be able to be really aggressive against the, the, the players who need to rack up the points. I mean, we've seen Phil Locke use some really extreme tactics up to this point, but now maybe it's not just going to be him. I mean, people might just go bananas in there. Yeah, I'd like to think that Phil's going to, you know, keep it a little less crazy and maybe be a little bit more tight, but you never know with Phil Luck, and that's that's why I love watching him and I love commentating on his heat. So, And we'll see if he brings out the ski mask, the sun goggles, and more. Heat 5 is set up nicely for some multi-level poker thinking. We know that strategy and tactics will play their part, but who will lock up the maximum points here at the Playground Poker Club? Let's get the cards in the Find air. The the How do you top That's Weird and crazy. Wild? Well, Wacky might be a start. Heat number 5. A lot of tactics in play. Oh, wow. My yeah, opinion yeah, is that uh, really, everything really depends on yeah, how this heat starts go. off. I'll do it for, 15. for example, for 15, uh, take a guy yeah, like Dan Shack. <laughs> Should yeah. Phil Locke, who's in this heat, and actually, Antonio S. Vandiari and perhaps even Brian Rass, if they start out very poorly, then uh, Dan Shack might be happy enough with a fifth place finish. How are you feeling about your uh, position in the league? Second? Very good, I imagine. Yeah, I'm, I'm doing very well. Uh, but by no means am I guaranteed a spot in the final four at this point. Uh, I, I figured out some of the math and, you know, I'm basically rooting against Jason Kuhn and Antonio at this point. Those are the two people that, I'm sorry to say, but if there's an all-in situation, I will not be impartial. <laughs> I will be rooting against both of them. It's funny you say because Kuhn, right before this heat started, he was saying, you know, I'm not worried. I'm bulletproof. I'm guaranteed the heads up no matter what. 
I feel like there's a lot of permutations where his 20 points might not even make top eight. The great Phil Locke, huh? You know, I think uh, even though everyone knows what great friends Locke and Antonio are, they've played each other at the same table on TV, far and few between. And uh, Antonio not only wants revenge, but is about to get it. How happy is he right now? Flop a full house against Mr. Locke. First seven would have been the bingo card. 6,000. Nice bet. <laughs> Locke decides to lose his marbles. I don't know. I mean, a seven is a... Just feel the way things have been going in this Premier League. There's more than two sevens in this deck. I'll probably decide before the end of the year if the spot's still open. Wow, check. What a check. He's He's got lock betting for value. By the way, he's got he him. Know. He's absolutely got him. If I bet, and I'm not saying I am going to or not, if I do, it's primary directive is so you don't see my hand. So I know I'm winning, but it's just so disgusting. You, you can't ever call, but uh, you know what? I'm not going to bet. I'm just going to take the money. I'm just going to take the money. <laughs> I'm not betting that shot. You know, Actually, he's rubbed it in. He's rubbed it in. <laughs> yeah. wow. I almost bet for value. Yeah, wow. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that was a beautiful yeah, speech. I'm not taking the money. He has a better hand. Wow. wow, I wanted to do it on the turn too, but I'm, I held off the river wow. for value. Oh, he's he's trying to make Antonio think he had an ace. Wow. What a beautiful speech. Or maybe like a Jack Deuce or something. I think that's the move, baby. Let's go. By the way, uh, you were kind of sitting in that seat right there for the Phil Locke show last night. <laughs> what, what do you think of the Phil Locke show when you see it? And are you, were you aware of what was going on? Like how many hands he was playing? I mean, that kind of stuff. I mean, well, uh, as you know, you know, I've had the opportunity once to sit here and watch Phil Locke play every single hand um, in the commentator. I was in the commentator booth for one of the tournaments in London. And I saw it. He was he just decided, you know, I'm going to be the cherry bomber today. Um, <laughs> and sometimes he, he makes that decision to do that. And other times he just sits there and, and he's snug. But, I, you know, you have to you have to figure out which Phil lock you're going to see. Call, and it seems like uh, throughout this tournament, we've seen the cherry bomber. We've seen the, the crazy Phil lock who tries to get people off the best hand a lot and plays a lot of hands in a very peculiar fashion. Oh. In this format, it just doesn't seem like the right thing to do, but, you know, it's Phil Locke, and he's the best. And by the way, this hand right here, uh, calling from the small blind with 3-8 suited, I'm guessing it has to do with the fact that it's Brian Rast. And Brian Rast is one of the guys who have to do poorly if Locke's going to do well. Right, and I don't know if that's that makes it um, better to call there. I think it, it, he should be not trying to... Wait, you're saying that Rast, oh. Phil wants Rast to do good or bad? Bad. That. So okay. So in that case, the lack should not be calling there with eight three. He should be three betting or folding. In should the be. Sense, yeah, exactly. And and I think that I mean, we, we playing against a player as good as Rast, uh, out of position with eight three suited, is not going to be a positive play in the long run. But it seems like it's going to work here. Looks here and. Uh, Obviously, Locke should raise. Yeah, I think at this point, Locke has to put more money in the pot. I mean, there's a lot of draws out there, and I don't think that Ross is going to, uh, you know, if he did have an ace, I don't think he's gonna, he's gonna fold it very wow. easily. He's he's going for the, the the super delayed check raise, right? I mean, he's gonna try and make Ross bet or bluff on the river. It looks like this is going to be a card I'm doing those cable that ab crunches. Rast and I'm just is like grunting I'm that Rast might bluff. Yeah, like from Rast's point of view, Phil has an ace here, cool, a lot. Right? Exactly. It looks like Phil has an ace, and what Rast might do here is put in a big overbet. Um, Say I have ace king, and you have to fold your ace jack. Exactly. Forty-one thousand. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Phil is a very. Oh. You can. The thing is, just called him. Just called. You know, Phil. You probably know more <laughs> about Phil's game than any living human being, which, which equates to absolutely nothing. Really. <laughs> right. He probably shocks you every single time he plays a hand. Still. 
<laughs> I mean, is that the right play? As, you know, know, what's interesting about Phil is that he's a very uh, complicated player. Really you know, he's he like puts people in very that. tough spots at times. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean that every decision he makes is good, but it's hard to play against him. It's hard to play against a guy who is completely unpredictable. Phil Lux storming out in front in Heat 5. We're back in a moment. Take the 2,000, boys. Enjoy the fight. I just buckled up. I'm so insane. We're at Canada's premier poker destination, the Playground Poker Club, where player rivalries are surfacing. Heat four finished off last night and there was a little bit of tension at the table. Uh, Phil Luck crippled your stack and you gave him a little gesture as you left the table. Yeah, well, you know, at some point the math has to start breaking even and it's been about 12 years now and it just, doesn't change. I can never beat this numb nuts if my life depended on it. You're so hopeless, it's amazing. Against anyone else, I have a chance, but against the great Phil Lock? Wow, you're so sick. I mean, wow. Phil Lock, ladies and gentlemen. I keep thinking at some point maybe things will change, but after 10 years or so, they're not changing. Maybe I should just give up. I mean, he's the greatest. It never ends. Never, ever, ever, ever ends. Do you feel any kind of pleasure when that happens? Is it like, yeah, I did it again? Although life is a combination, and I you know, a juxtaposition of the pleasure, tension, things here and there. Uh, the pleasure comes naturally just by living the tension that you were talking about earlier. Yeah, I, I, fe I feel tension with myself mostly when I see I'm giving tons of EV away, getting it all in wrong. The problem is I might be playing dirty. Are you kidding me? I knew I couldn't get this limp through. The world's good. Whatever happens, I can't learn it all fast <laughs> enough. It's, uh, you know. All right. But I'll just, you know. We'll just cross our fingers. Cross our fingers and uh, heat five today. Let the chips fall where they may. I mean, right now it seems quite clear that a bagel is a disaster, and maybe even seventh, it is, is a disaster for everyone except for perhaps Locke, who's already just in a world of pain, having played three heats, and Dan Coleman, who, you know, is, is, is right now just deciding between if he's going to be the biggest or second biggest chip stack at the final table. Yeah, Dan is making it no, pretty much no matter what. Um, and and by the way, you're the only one who really has uh, has gotten an edge on Dan Coleman. I mean, you kind of uh, throttled him a few times in the in the heat that you won. But uh, what do you think of his play so far? He's been pretty awesome, right? He's been playing very well. Uh, Dan and I actually have a lot of history online. He said that. Yeah. We play a lot of heads up together. Um, so I know his little tricks. I know his little three bet. Those well, I mean, this might be a case in point right here. Outside, top to bottom, right. Right. Fall apart and the cup. that said, this is the those, first time that Coleman has Coleman made an aggressive around, play uh, like this the before the third the level of, of a heat. The absolute I believe that. Cadillac Dan is, I think he's coming in with a strategy of just of a, of a typical sitting go where you're supposed yeah, to play well, tight well, at the beginning right and then, get, uh, then aggressive at the uh, end. And he just makes decisions um, based on putting people in spots where they have to either fold or put their entire tournament like a risk. Wow, and this is really, uh, you know, from Gross, we haven't seen this before. He's just flatting with the two kings. Uh, and. I swear to it's God. it's trappy. I mean, this is not fear, is it? I mean, this is trappy, right? He's trying to let Dan Coleman hang himself. I would hope so, um, and I think it's a good play. I think it's a really, you know, it could be that JG genuinely just wants to pot control with his kings, but it could also be that um, he knows that uh, he knows that Dan is three betting a, a decent amount, and um, by four betting, like with Jeff's image, if he if he four bets in this spot pre-flop, then it, oh. it his hand is face up based on how he's been playing up until this point. So I really like the I really like the call from him. Tricky spot for Coleman. I think Coleman's gonna is Coleman out of position or no, in, yeah he's in the big blind. It's big blind and against the middle position open. Okay. I think I think Coleman's gonna fire again in this spot. Really high rock into like. Um, but then I was thinking about it. And, and the uh, idea being that really there's very few hands that Jeff can raise with here. I mean, even if he hasn't beat, which Coleman probably knows that if he gets called, he's beat like all the time here. Right. I think 
Um, basically, he's betting for a number of reasons. A, because he's out of position and he wants to uh, continue putting the pressure on. Like, if he was in position here, I think he, he might be checking back a decent amount. But he might think he has the best hand sometimes. And also, uh, he has a lot of outs to hit, the, like, for sure, the guaranteed nuts in this spot. And also... Um, you know, oh. uh, Gross is looking like he's really a little bit nervous here. I mean, maybe he's putting on an act, but I think he's trying to figure out how big the river bet might be. Like, if Coleman checks here, I think it's getting checked back. What do you think? I think maybe there's a little dynamic between them where, you know, JG might be a little worried about the bridge. Wow. The kid's got heart. No one can say he doesn't He knows he's beat. He knows he's beat. Back. At this stage, he probably knows what, what Jeff has. Ace, Jack, or better, for sure. Right. I I would agree with that. Wow. I know you're not bluffing, but I was trying to think. Of you. With an over pair, JG's going to be put in a very difficult spot here. I mean, it's it's a great bluff. And that's that's the other reason for betting the turn is that you could represent and you can um, to set up a bluff on the river. I want to let it go, but I you play queens like well, this. That doesn't mean they eat people. I mean, like, the sizing really, like, is so smelly. Oh, yeah, man. Coleman's range is super polarized in this spot. It, it's either uh, it's either aces or better. Oh, oh wow. You're good. Kid, that's what you do. I just wheel them in with kings. No problem. You know? I mean, I was going to re-raise pre, but I just, you know. I want to see if Dan's going to try to abuse me today. I just, you tried. Buck I just buckled up. Yeah. Huge Honestly, news! Jeff yeah. Gross has taken the sheen off Dan Coleman. And I mean, Coleman may have pushed it a little too far. And for Jeff Gross, that may be the second strongest statement he has made in this Premier League. You know, I'm not going to let you guys, I may play a little bit tight, but. I can buckle up. But he, no, what do you mean? What do you mean, jacks or tens? He has, air, he has like random two cards there. He could have. He could have. He doesn't have jacks or tens. Jeff Gross is a new face to the Premier League, so we thought we'd find out a little bit more about the high roller. My name is Jeff Gross. I'm from Ann Arbor, Michigan. This year has been a breakout year. With the year ago being here in Montreal, exactly, it was ex one year ago where I had that third place finish in a WPT, like 1,200 person field. Feel very comfortable here, and I take seconds and thirds a lot, and fifths, and like, I'm ready to get get a win. This should be a really good Premier League for me. I'm, I truly believe that, I mean, everyone thinks they're the best probably, you know, in this format, but I really know like my sit and go and my ability to, to stay tight and change gears. Um, I think some people have trouble doing that. They just want to play too many pots and are going to get let their ego come to play. And I have a game plan. That's all I'm going to say. I don't want to like go into too much detail, but I'm going to be tight at the beginning and loosen it up. This is not how I would a approach a normal multi-tournament. You know, no one's going to be going to be saying, you know, I'm inventing the game right now. But when I get heads up or three hand, I think you'll you'll notice a, a dramatic difference in play. Uh, my strategy, you'll see how it goes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know if you heard. Of, apparently, uh, last night the Jungle Man won thirty thousand dollars off Antonio in a prop bet that involved him standing outside without a shirt for twenty minutes. Wow, I did hear something about it, but I didn't hear the details. So it was twenty minutes, thirty thousand dollars. He had to stand outside. The, it was really cold last night. I mean, it was I like remember. seven, eight below zero. Uh, I think wow. Celsius. And uh, and uh, yeah, twenty minutes. Uh, uh, without a shirt outside the hotel. And Antonio's a little bit tilted today because apparently Dan did it with ease. Wow. <laughs> That's insane. I mean, I, I'm lucky because I only have to spend about 16 seconds outside every day. I go from the hotel to the car and then the car to the casino. Uh, and I was... Even those 14 seconds is a lot for me, but <laughs> spending 20 minutes, I don't think I could do it. <laughs> Apparently the guy who was most tilted was Scott Seifer because he piled it on Antonio's side because he just said, well, Antonio never loses these prop bets, <laughs> especially not against a guy like the Jungle Man. He yeah. must know for sure. I mean, it's a fair, it's definitely a fair uh, statement. <laughs> Take the 2,000, boys, and enjoy the fight. Antonio is probably one of the best prop bettors in the world, but sometimes he makes mistakes, you know. And you know when it when it comes to the jungle man's willpower, you know, you never know. 
You wouldn't want to bet on the jungle man's willpower. You wouldn't want to underestimate He's that. got a lot of willpower, <laughs> the kid. I mean, I mean, you don't just become, like, the guy who won the most money in the history of online poker just, just because you, you know, you have to have, you have to have some determination. Right. Were you there to witness that, or no, no, I didn't. I just everyone was talking about. I it. wonder if he was jumping around or like doing any. He had to stand still. He had to stand still. Yeah. Oh yeah. my. Good. Yeah. yeah. That changes <laughs> everything. <laughs> so obviously this ace has changed things. Question is how much has it changed? Coleman's bet every street here. So jungle jungle's flat at every street in position. Yeah. Wow. Are they the same team as last year? Coleman checks the straight. And I think that's it. I think it's actually gonna work. I think that jungle is gonna turn this hand into a bluff a lot of the time. I mean <laughs> Dan just is playing jungle like a fiddle here. It's well said. <laughs> and everybody knows that if you give Jungle the opportunity to bluff, he'll take it, right? Yeah, definitely. He's definitely one of the t the type of player to take that opportunity. Fifty-six <laughs> thousand. Oh, look at you wow. see that little micro expression from Dan? Like it works, no. you know? He he just gave that little smile. Yeah. <laughs> wow, like a fiddle is right. Wow. He played the jungle. That was beautiful. He jungle is not happy right now. I was just <laughs> constantly <laughs> so ready. And you know, for jungle man, a bagel is his Premier League. Jungle, what happened there? They, I tried. I bluffed with a hand that I could bluff with, and then he had a straight. <laughs> <laughs> if he didn't, if he didn't have the straight, he wouldn't have called yeah, you. Yeah, right? I wasn't. So insane. Every one of my bluffs, I just run into the nuts. I mean, that is that is exactly yeah, what's yeah. happened. So ridiculous. You so just cannot have the best hand when anyone does anything other than winning all of them. That's the only You know what? It's so sick. I've seen all your hands, and they always have a better hand than you. Yeah. It's sick. It, it, it really does seem that way whenever yeah. I play live. It's, it's amazing because like, everyone knows that uh, yeah. Antonio is trolling yeah. jungle yeah. except yeah. for jungle. <laughs> Every time they have a hand, it's like insane, right? It seems like it. It does. Oh, they do love it. He's such a great character for the Premier League. It's so annoying that I have the one... Yeah. Well, I guess if you have every queen, you can have that and random other queens. And <laughs> yeah. really, they all, Jackson, they all just yeah. want to see Jungle Man on tilt. You would have just thrown me there. And, you know, that's this is a $125,000 tournament. They have to take that edge if they have it. Everything the jungleman does in this Premier League has not worked yet. And yet here he is, still with a heck of a chance. What's the, uh, Two high level poker players, the favorites in the tournament, best friends, and Coleman. So we're gonna make anything this entire point, seriously. Check. Jungle, in all my years of playing poker, like it is one of the sickest things I've seen this this Premier League. Right? I mean, it's like it just doesn't stop, you know? <laughs> it's sick. I've never seen anything like it before in my life. Last last heat, I, I missed a couple draws versus uh, Vanessa or whatever. Did nice. she call you down? No, no, no. Well, what she loves the Phil turn Locke in a spot where I barrel turn, but maybe you know, not. Maybe it's just that this is yeah, a like really a, tough board yeah, to continue on without a strong hand. Well, the old Phil Lock and PBF special. A little Jack 7 4, ladies and gentlemen. Let's see what happens here. Three hearts. I'm yeah, excited. I'm excited. How does Phil Lock win at poker? Jungle, how does Phil Lock win at poker? He's got the X Factor. He what? He's got the X Factor. You never know what he's going to do. <laughs> how good is he 1 to 100 if you're 100? You, you can answer it. I give him like a 54. Okay. Maybe less. This is what I love about Jungle. This is what Antonio knows is that you, Jungle nice will not lie if you ask him a question. That is an oven in here. He managed to avoid that question, but he will not lie. I'm in. You just play in your underwear. Full stone cold bluff you there. Yeah, stone cold bluff you there. Is like ten of like just complete air. <laughs> complete air. Phil Lock has complete air. I'm just letting the world yeah, know. Yeah, he might just have like ace nine. 
Every single person at the table Obviously. knew that except for Jeff Gross. But uh, well, you gotta pick your man. You don't know you? that PBF, you know. Yeah, he's taking it. He knows like, that, like, if it's a close call, PBF. he's gonna be able to give me the fold. Like, uh, so know. who's better than he you? He knows if I have black aces, I'm probably not gonna continue, you know? So. First level in the books. Blinds will go to two and four thousand. And obviously, it's been a good level for the two guys at the top of the leaderboard. Jeff Gross would not be pushed around by Dan Coleman, and Phil Locke has pushed everybody else. Premier League Season 7 continues here at the Playground Poker Club after the break. I don't think I can respect myself tomorrow if you bluff me here. God, I'm such a fish. I just love it so much. I can't just let you. I'm sorry. You are such an idiot. This is the Party Poker Premier League, where heat number five represents one last chance for some to secure the points they need to remain in the competition. Time to head back to the action. Take a look at the table as it stands. Coleman a lock for the top four. Gross two, bar a disaster in his remaining heats. It's Kuhn's last chance to post a score before he has to await his fate from the sidelines. Jungleman looks certain to make the playoff zone, but needs big points to move into the top four. Esfandiari and Locke hanging in there, and Shaq and Rast in the elimination. Rast is going to need a win or a second place. Well, I mean, no, he's only played two heats, though. He plays the last two, so it is kind of interesting. I mean, you don't ever, you feel like having to win the last heat is sometimes the toughest thing, but, you know, it is better to have to win, and that's all you have to do, than to know that you have to come, like, fourth or better, in a sense, because in those last heats, you know, having to come fourth or better is sometimes really tricky to do when a lot of people have to do it. But at least if you have to win or you're out, I a like, lot of stuff too. <laughs> you kind of know what you have to do. Yeah, and you're not going to be afraid to get the chips in, right? Right. So it's going to be. There's a lot of a lot of pressure comes off Rast in that. If yeah, he does poorly, I mean. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Thirteen thousand. Busy talking about some stupid chip thing. Doesn't matter. What would you do? I think I fold it. I already. Uh, oh, I oh I limped because of that thing, and then you and everyone folded. It's crazy. Huh? So you want my money, and you are my friend. Seat six, call. Heads up, guys. Check. Seat six, check. He's still probably just end up playing heads up and be a favorite of but that. Brian Rast is definitely starting yeah, to shadow yeah. Phil Locke Seat a little eight, bit. Check. And you, have a, you, have a you know, it may be because chance, this is your four, this is your last he realizes that yeah. Phil is one of the guys who has to finish check. under him if he's yeah. going to make Seat the... Six, check. The final eight. It's kind of poor. Seat eight check. Lock limped like and, like and Rast guys. raised like pre-flop, and then it's just gone check, 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 check. It's been checked the whole way after. Yep. Wow. Yeah, so I mean, at this point. <laughs> oh my god. I, you know what? You know what? Th this is, Brian Rast is, is not incapable of calling this. I mean. I, not at all, and not at all. I mean, you could see the look in his, his eyes. He's not hes not completely over this hand yet. He saw Phil play, uh, you know, the entire last two heats. He's been watching him intently. 302,500. What's up, Philly boy? What's going on? You know, there would be giving me nothing more than pleasure than to just stake my whole Premier League on making the sickest call with ace high right now. It would be so much pleasure. <laughs> It would just, you have no idea how much I would like it, but it would hurt a lot if you had like two, two eights or like the A6. I mean, Lack's line does not make much sense here. He, he checks the whole way and then two tens come oh, on the turn in the river. Oh, I know, this is such I mean, a big fold in the books. Lack is supposed mm. to have. I think he's going to call. I think he's going to call. Supposed to fold this. He's definitely considering it. But this is $125,000 down the drain with ace high to it all in. What a hero he would be if he just makes this call. Come on, buddy. What do you have? Don't want to say anything? Got Jack 10? Jack 10. I could believe Jack 10. Maybe I just make a statement on national television that I'm just a massive fish. <laughs> Maybe it's just time to make a statement. 
that I just, I just really never fold a hand. That's just the statement to make, right? <laughs> Doesn't even matter. <laughs> Premier League's on it. Wow. It's the worst call of all time. I love that he's Fold. tanking for this long. It shows how great of a player Ross is and how his mind works. You really don't want to talk, do you? Guy, you don't love talking. Why don't you want to talk? Maybe I can't do it. He's such a sick man. He just knows. He just knows if he bets 50k, I'm gonna call him. That's why he does this. This has to be a bluff. Guys, this has to be a bluff. Like, if you bet 50k, I was gonna call you, and you figured that out. These guys have spent so much time together. That's why I just got to do it. Why he's so smart? I don't think I could respect myself tomorrow if you bluffed me here. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it boils down to. Some things are more important than money in life. <laughs> But you're gonna show me Jack Ten. I'm wow. gonna be so steam. God, everybody <laughs> wants me to call this so bad too. <laughs> Everybody's like, Brian, please call this. <laughs> you are sick though. You could just be doing this for value. Wow. Kind of want to do it. He's so close. Oh, he's such a such a hero. I mean, he is so cool. I I I I didn't know he was capable of this. He's definitely very capable. See, they really he's the best! Oh my god. He is the best! Oh my god. Wow. He did it. Wow. He did it. Rest in he honor! Is he's the best. He's the best. Wow. You're the best. That was I knew he was going to call 50, so I went This is the guy at the bottom of the leaderboard. You gave it away at the end. That was his Premier League. He gave it away at the end, 100%. What did I say? I thought so too. Well, he was about to call, and then he like didn't call, and then you like move, you stopped movement and went to go for a sip of water. like. If you wanted him to call, you wouldn't do anything to change course of action. Uh, yeah. I thought he had an ace of diamonds. Oh. I thought wow. Really wow. I mean, Antonio's Antonio telling Phil that he blunted you. I totally gave it away. I didn't feel bad enough. 100% gave it away. Totally <laughs> <gave it away. laughs> <laughs> I wonder if Ras noticed that. I did not have my mind made up. Ras, you're the best. You did for 50. That was the problem. Wow. That what was a call! I mean, that's a lot of money. You think they'll show that one? Lastly, what? Yeah. That was insane. Do not bluff Rastinator. Can I get an anti <laughs> King Rast. It works sometimes, but other times you just need to I mean, he had scared. a monster or a stone cold bluff. He couldn't have anything else, really. Yeah, was that queen it. seven of spades? Yeah. In the one hole. Limped in in the one hole. That's, that's really good play. <laughs> <laughs> Antonio just <laughs> never <laughs> stops yeah. with the needle. Could have been Hollywood. I was talking myself out of it, and then I just re-upped. I just put the balls on the table and said, "It's time to go home. Oh, go big or go home." Ras is like a legend. He's he's the kind of guy that was playing the biggest stakes online whenever I first came into the game, and then when the Macau games came around, and those were the biggest games, he was there playing those. Shows up to the World Series, wins a bunch of bracelets. Final table is the million dollar buy in one drop and the 50K Players Championship. Uh, there's just, uh, no one could argue that he's one of the world's elite. He's a beast of a poker player. I mean, the guy has so much heart, it's unbelievable. I love my Rasty, but I have to bust you, Rastinator. I'm to I wouldn't be surprised to see Rast make some crazy plays and be right in this Premier League. Boom! Yes. He's like a Stanford math guy. He's just gonna be, oh, this is what, oh, 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 it's free betting here, you know. So Ras is the best. Ras is the best, King Ras. Whoops. He is an absolute force of the game. Punishing poker gods for this call, because I don't know if it's right. And he's just a great guy too. It's great to have him at a table because he's fun, he tells jokes, and then he takes all your chips. Welcome back. The Party Poker Premier League is all about securing enough points to book a place at the coveted final table, where the winner gets a cool $400,000. It's been a thrilling start to Heat 5, and we've only played one level. Yeah. Moments ago, we saw the biggest call ever made in Premier League history. This has to be a bluff. Okay, this has to be a bluff. I don't think I could respect myself tomorrow if you bluff me here. Oh He's the best! Oh my God. He is the best! Oh Rest in honor, ladies Boom. and gentlemen! I am Who's the best? Wow. You're the best! I knew he was gonna go. Wow, check it out. 
So Brian Rast goes from absolute bottom of the leaderboard now to number two, and he did it in the most stunning way you could imagine. I mean, the amount of times that Rast has heard Phil Locke say, if they go all, if I go all in, then they can't call, <laughs> is probably like over 100. <laughs> and that had to be going through Rast's head wow. when he was making wow. that call. Locks brought out the Siggy goggles. Oh, wow. <laughs> we, we know what happened yesterday when he did that. I mean, it's six raised 9,500. It's like his alter ego, the one that just doesn't lose a pot. <laughs> and look, he gets he gets rewarded right away with the tens. They really should set up a phone booth behind the stage and just let Phil go in there and change costumes every once in a while. Now, see, this is Coleman is just Coleman, I'm, I guarantee you would not call someone like Antonio with Jack-7 suited here. Uh, it, it seems to me that at this point, Coleman has established that, okay, Phil is playing a certain style that uh, that he thinks he could exploit, and he's going to he's going to try to target Phil in playing as many pots with him as possible. Now, Kuhn thought he might have a spot there. Was it a spot? I mean, obviously we know Phil's got tens, but was it? A, it, it looked actually like not a bad squeezing spot for Jason Kuhn, right? Um, not loving it. Not loving it. No, not loving it. I just, I think that uh, Jason was more considering whether he should call than whether he should raise. It just puts uh, Jason in a really bad spot if he gets called because he's out of position against every single player, except for Jungle Six, Man, of check. course, but. Check. One check. So the only guy with a heart is Kuhn. C2 check, three check. Really it's hard for Phil Locke to represent the ace of hearts here. Like, he raised pre-flop. <laughs> Could he, Bet would 16, he ever have just knuckled the flop with the ace of hearts? <laughs> I think he would, but Fold. it's really amazing. Uh, Jesse, because it, it, it seems like it seems like you know you can recognize that it's really hard for Phil to represent a flush here, um, and if somebody has a flush, they're probably not going to call. But Phil is betting into four; he's betting into three other people on a four-card heart board uh, without a flush. I mean, just I I just don't think that that. Uh, it's a good play. I don't think it's a good play. I'm just going to say it, you know, let's call a spade a spade. Like, I just I just can't see how that's going to work in the long run. I mean, um, look, Jungle Man is actually thinking fold. about, like... Just calling with top two pair, yeah. <laughs> but I don't think Jason's going anywhere in this hand. I, I do not have a flush, and that hurts me so bad, because I know I'm, if I had a five high flush, I would have bet. One pair. All right, well, we still got a streak at that. <laughs> Oh <laughs> my god. Did that oh really, it really just, just happen? It that really takes did. the cake. It really, really just happened. Really it just really, happened. Happened. It really it did just happen. Cake. Oh <laughs> my god. Phil Locke really cool did not know <laughs> that that was a turn card. Probably the best thing. Oh my. Oh, I'm just in god. disbelief. Oh boy. Did Locke? And he paid him off. Yeah, and he paid him off. <laughs> he called him on the turn. He showed all the weakness. Told his hand, basically, and still paid him off. Just at the off chance that Kuhn was making a move. Wow. I can't you believe are... this. How do you win? He would bet more if he had a set, right? So if you bet 50, I have to call faster. Um, by the way, I'm just at a loss for words right now. Like, I just don't understand what's going on. I only had, I had a pair with I no said, but you don't understand. You gave your hand away. Incredible. It doesn't matter now. I, I will. I will lay uh, eighty to one. That makes the cut. Does anybody want it? Bet if that makes the cut. Or not? I, I, I didn't even have a heart. It's I'll not even interesting. That, makes it that will oh, be making the cut. Blind, blind, blind. I mean, the guy. You know, he folds uh, the best hand. <laughs> <laughs> you see that hand where he had the best hand for eighty k pot, and he just folded it. <laughs> oh yeah, in a, in a TV cash game. He had the best hand. The guy turns over his cards. He had the best hand. I thought I had eight, but I had eight six. I wonder if you can get disqualified from a $125,000 tournament just on, just on that basis. <laughs> well, you know, sometimes, you know, it doesn't work out. <laughs> you are such an idiot. Oh. Oh. 
You are such an idiot. Oh my. Oh my. <laughs> Sometimes Wait, the wheels just fall off. Phil, you know, <laughs> he's just such a genius that, <laughs> you, know, you know how, like, whenever <laughs> you yeah. meet a genius, ben there's always something that's lacking. Right. Yeah. It just Sometimes seems it like, like, you know, it's never perfect. It's never perfect. And when you're, when you're that smart, right there, there's just I'll like an overflow of intelligence. Again, like you sometimes know? you're just gonna be an idiot in that some in some areas, well. and you know, <laughs> those those areas are becoming yeah, I mean, very transparent I, today. Uh, <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> yeah. it should have cost me fifty because I felt like I have to call up to fifty now because the bluffs for the sets that he turns into. Yeah, but the river was a part anyway. Yeah. Good news for Jason oh, Kuhn, by the, the way. Uh, picking up a little bit of free money, money here, wow. all of a sudden. The last ten, and that's now this one. That's a little embarrassment. The theme seems to continue of, of Jungle Man just Two, four, getting unlucky. I'm sort of feeling like I can't be caught. <laughs> And, and Antonio is just called here, and so what Antonio is doing here is he's he's calling with the intention of bluffing the river. And you know it, it's and it's not going to work in this in this hand, I don't think. Uh, Antonio is betting strictly to bluff the, thinking that Jason's weak. Why won't it work? C4 bet thirty-seven thousand. I don't think it's going to work. Fault. Default? Yeah. Wow. That was a strong bluff. I mean, I mean, maybe I'm just underestimating. I think I bet too much. God, I'm such a fish. <gasps> oh my god. Antonio might be the best at confusing people. He's just the master of misinformation. He really is. And then just like there, He's I can't really call. All the good things I was about check uh, from Phil like, Locke without any of the bad part. ones, really. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and 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 some that are better. <laughs> Antonio's playing really well. Folks. You know, like calling that calling that turn and then betting the river. Folks. It Folks. seems like when he calls the turn, Folks. he could have a low flush. But when he bets the river, it's almost like he has to have a high flush, Folks. unless he's just Folks. completely floating, which is what he Folks. was doing. That's a strong play. I mean, I'm not. You got to give Antonio credit for that. He he just always seems so in tune with people that it's incredible. I mean, he just, I just he almost never makes a mistake, really. BBF, BBF. Seat six raised eight thousand. These are the kind of spots, you know. Seat five, sorry. Where when it gets around late position and gross raises, Locke is going to play with him. I mean, not that Gross doesn't have a hand he should raise with, but Locke's gonna play with him for sure. Call. You wasted so much time last night. Unreal. Why? Why, why do like why do we think that Locke is playing with him every hand? Like what? What's the reason? And I think he, calling he, I think he, 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 I, well, I just feel like he Actually, thinks he can play, outplay I'm him later on. And okay. And you, guys, you know that he's sort I, of like little, little that he's sort of like one step ahead of him. Space. I don't do a lot with the. There's not a lot I'm doing with it. I'm just trying to enjoy my little space. You know? <laughs> so what? I take a little seat four seconds tech. here. I really enjoy the process. It's like the whole. I just love it so much. I can't just let through. I'm sorry. Yeah, the guy with the I just love it. It's just a participatory moment. It's good. I mean, I don't mind three betting it, but I just don't under. <laughs> seat six. There all we in. go. <laughs> and I wonder if, if Jeff Gross has trapped him. Dan Jack's got a double gutter, but yeah, Dan's folding. It's uh, <laughs> it's gonna be tough for JG to make this call, but you know oh. he just saw he just saw Rast make an insane call with Ace High, and this is a lot. I think it's an easier call. Oh man, is this your balance or is this like I would never do this twice? <laughs> wow. Phil just overbet. 173 into how much? 27, basically. 27. <laughs> as far as the Premier League leaderboard works, like, things are going really well for Jeffrey Gross. And his 400,000 that he's got right now is perfect. You know, he can outrun Dan Coleman. I really don't know. Just don't know. How much does he pick up by knocking out Phil Locke? I mean, he doesn't. It's not 
and anywhere crucial for his Premier League future to pick up these chips. Fold. Call. Oh, he folds. Call, 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 Can I see call. the river? Wait. Oh, <laughs> he's on a draw. Can we see the river? I'm sure he's on a draw. Can we see the river? It's very yeah. important. Sure. If there's no objection, so let's see the river. Yeah. Right. No, 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 no. If he wants to show us why he wants to see the river, I would like to see the river. So I object unless he wants to show us his cards. He does Sorry. want to show his bluff. Right. <laughs> you can see the river if you show. Yeah, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And, oh, he got there. And Antonio is fold. just so ridiculously yeah, well, clever. He's so good. What was? It's He's like really. He might be one of the best yeah, in the world at hand reading. Just 32 hands played, and it's been nonstop entertainment. Out in the lead, Jeff Gross thanks Dan Coleman's early chip donation. Second, with what must be one of the greatest calls of all time, Brian the King Rast. Coon and Shaq well in the running, but for Jungleman and Locke, it's been a roller coaster ride. Heat 5 continues next time here in Montreal as the players compete for the remaining points and with it their status in Season 7 of the Party Poker Premier League. You should loosen up a little. I don't need advice. That's not a good flop. Punishing poker gods for this call because I don't know if it's right. I'm 100%. It makes me so mad. 